All right, super. Okay, so let's get going with that. Right, so this question, question four on the page, um, it says, if a polynomial f of x equal to that, whose graph as is shown below has a y intercept of 0, 2, which they've indicated, and a turning point of 1, 4, find b, c, and d. All right, so now these are more graph interpretive questions. So it is important that you look for the keywords. And the keywords would be y intercept, that's when x is 0, right? And turning point when derivative equals 0. So most definitely I'm going to have to take this derivative and put it equal to 0. Okay. And I do have the x value at that turning point as well. But let's start at the beginning. So turning point tells me derivative equals 0. I'm now going to take the derivative of the function, which will be minus 3x squared plus 2bx plus c. All right, so power forward, subtract 1. I do, of course, know that the x part of the turning point is 1. So I'm able to substitute that in, which I'm going to need. Right? So minus 3 plus 2b plus c equals 0. I now have an equation with two unknowns. So that means that I need another equation with those two unknowns. Okay. Now remember, this equation has points on it, infinitely many points, and one of the points is 1, 4. Even though it is a turning point, it is still just also a point, x, y. So we are able to substitute into the original. Remember, f of x means y equals. Okay. Um, there seems to be a lot of noise going on. These um, videos are recorded. So it's not going to be very nice for other people to hear it when there's a lot of noise going on. So please, could you just mute yourselves so that we don't have any noise coming through? Just unmute yourself if you want to say something all right or ask a question right so we have minus x cubed plus bx squared plus cx and then remember your d is your y intercept which is two right so if one four is a point y is four x is one so i'm substituting in the point one four Right, and then you're going to have an equation with a B and a C in it as well. Guys, I still hear shuffling around. Please, can I ask you to mute yourself? Um, it's not really fair on people who are trying to watch the video afterwards. Right, please. Thank you. All right, so four equals minus 1 plus b plus c plus 2. And of course, I can tidy that up. 4 plus 1 is 5, minus 2 is 3. And then I have this equation as well. So I need to solve these two simultaneously. Many ways to do that. I would quite easily just make b the subject here and then substitute it into that equation. So if I rewrite this equation, minus 3 plus 2b is 3 minus c, um, plus c equals 0. And then I can quite easily solve. Minus 3 plus 6 is 3. Minus 2c plus c is minus c. So c equals 3. Right, so I immediately have c equal to 3. And if c equals 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. So therefore b equals 0. Right, and I have my B and C. And my D, of course, was my Y intercept. So when they say find B, C, and D, look for the D, that was the easiest one, the Y intercept of 2. Um, that was the only one. 
So literally, if this was multiple choice, if that was the only one with D equals 2, it would have obviously been B, even if you did not work that out. But you can see that C is 3 and B is 0. Right. These are very popular questions. You need to work with the keywords. Okay. Turning point. Immediately, you go derivative equals 0. So do it. At 1, 4, sub in the 1. Get an equation. A turning point is just a point as well. So it's 1, 4 into the original. Not forgetting that D is the y-intercept of 2. Okay. Right. Are there any questions? If there's like, um, an, uh, I mean, a, like an example like this where there isn't the turning point, but like it has like, have you got an example that you can put on the group? Maybe. Uh, group, or must I say it now? Um, uh, isn't it long? Can't you just take a picture and maybe send it? I think that might, it might be better. Okay, ma'am. I'm not sure. What do you say? Yeah, I'll send you a picture. I think so. I think that would be better. Then I can see exactly what it says, you know? Yes, ma'am. I'm just looking out to see, are you sending it? Great stuff. Super. Oh, technology, isn't that a wonderful thing? All right. Okay. Guys, please don't write on the board. All right. Um, we need to keep this platform very professional, okay? Because these are videos that other people are going to watch. So let's just uh, kind of stick to rules. I'm not that crazy about too many rules, but um, I think in this case, out of consideration for the big picture and what we're trying to, to, to do out there and help, I think it's better if we rather do things nicely, you know, so that everyone benefits equally, you know. All right, so this graph just roughly looks something like this. They gave this as a general equation of this curve. It says uh, the graph of G intersects the X axis at minus five zero and at P. And then it says the Y axis at naught 20 um, and P, are, P and R are turning points. So R is here, it's also a turning point and P is also a turning point. Okay. All right. So again, there are there are key words there for sure. But um, what you do need to realize first off is that that is your y-intercept, which is d. Okay. So let's first fill that in. So y equals x cubed. By the way, they're giving you the one in front, so they haven't left this as an unknown. Plus bx squared plus cx uh, plus twenty. All right, and they are mentioning the word turning points, but they haven't given us any of those values. Okay, uh, let's see if there's anything else that they've said. Did the question then just say after that, just find B, C, and D? Yeah, may I sent you another picture? It has the questions. Oh, okay, on. all right. Okay, I'll see it. I've got it. taking a while to download for some reason. Sure. Do you want to read the question to me, Salong? Show that B is equal to 1, C is equal to minus 16, and D is equal to 20. Okay, well, we've got D is 20, right? C is equal C is equal to minus 16. Minus 16. Okay, so you have to show that. So it's irrelevant at the moment. You need to show it. Um, right. Okay. 
Um, this is a point on the curve. So we could want to try to, to substitute that in. The problem is, yeah, that should work. So naught y zero, x is minus five plus b minus five squared. Remember, it's a point, so it needs to go into the equation. Plus c minus five plus 20. All right. Um, so what's that? Minus 125 plus 25b minus 5c plus 20. And I can divide through by 5. So minus 25 plus 5b minus c plus 4 is um, an equation. Mm. And they said that there were turning points, but they haven't given you any of these values in the question, right? I'm just reading the question again. Thus, bx squared is definitely right. Okay, and if you were to try and even put in naught 20, it won't work because if x is 0, 20, you get 20 equals 20. We've already fold that in. Um, and they definitely didn't give you any values for for your uh, for your turning points they gave you no information with either of those points just double check for me okay but for what it's worth i'm in the meantime going to act like i'm finding a turning point so derivative equals zero so in this step um 3x squared plus 2bx plus c equals zero the problem is we do not have the x values we do not have this x value and we do not have that x value. Right, what else do we know about um, the roots? We only have two roots, which means that this one, they are equal roots, right? But that doesn't matter. Remember, that's a repeated root. I want to try something else. Y equals A, which is one. They told us it's one. And then X minus minus five, so I'm using the formula for finding the equation when I'm given the um, x-intercepts. And x minus p, but it will be squared because it's a repeated root. <coughs> right, so if I simplify that, x minus p squared, um, this would be the equation of the curve. So I could maybe equate it to the original. Equate that to x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus 20. I'm grasping at straws. I'm simply going to work with it and see how far we go. Okay. So x plus 5. And then if I square that out, I get x squared minus 2px plus p squared equals that because then i'll be able to equate coefficients maybe let's see what happens if i multiply out i get x cubed which balances with that x cubed on that side right then i have minus 2 px squared and plus p squared x plus 5 x squared minus 10 px and plus 5p squared. And what I think we're probably going to have to do is equate coefficients. That will help. All right. I'm going to have to carry on here, maybe. All right. So you can see x squared equals x squared. That's fine. There's no unknown there in front. Remember, we're equating the coefficients. 1, 1. That's not going to help. Then as far as x squared goes, we've got two x squared terms. Minus 20 plus 5. Um, I just want, oh, this is a p. Minus 2p x squared. So it's a minus 2p plus 5 is in front of the x squared. So minus 2p plus 5 must equal what's in front of the x squared, which is b. Right? And then... Um, the coefficient of x 
x is p squared minus 10p, still not looking great, equals c, and then 5p squared equals 20. So in other words, anything without an x must equal anything without an x. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. 20 divided by 5 is 4. And if I square root that, it will be plus or minus 2. Remember, if I even root, it's plus or minus. But this is on the positive x-axis. So p equals 2. Right, and if I have p, then I can find c. And if I have p, I can find b. All right, so if p is 2, minus 2, 2 plus 5 equals b, um, so b equals 1. Is that what they asked you to show? Yeah, b equals 1, there we go, it is. And then 2 squared minus 10, 2 equals c, 4. Um, are you sure this was, are you sure this was minus 16? p squared, minus 10p, p squared minus 10p equals c, and we said that p was 2, so that's 4, oh, that's right, 4 minus 20 is minus 16, there we go, so it's done. All right, so in this case, it didn't actually help um, to sub the other point in because it didn't go anywhere, we, we, we had too many unknowns. Right? We, well, we didn't have another equation. So it hinged on the fact that you knew that this was a repeated root, hence bracket squared. For that root, you repeat the bracket twice. X minus P, X minus P, which is X minus P squared. Right. That was not a very nice question. I don't often ask that. So that's quite a tough one. Good. Any questions about that? Okay, but you see the thought process that you have to go through. Exhaust all possibilities. Obviously, notice first that that is the y-intercept. Fill that in first. Our next instinct is to sub in the other point, but it didn't help because there were two unknowns and no way of finding another equation with a b and a c, because we had no more information, right? And even if we did derivative equals zero, because they spoke about turning points, right? Keyword, turning points, derivative equals zero. That also didn't help because we didn't have the x value where the turning points were happening, right? And so we go, oh, that's not going to help, okay? And then we look, okay, but hang on, I've got a repeated root. Let me try and write out the general form when I'm given roots. And on that note, let's look at one equation, uh, sorry, one graph, where you have three different um, x-intercepts and another point anywhere. Okay, so this is, say, 4, and this is minus 2, 3, 5. Okay, something like that. I've made it up, so it's not going to work out very nicely, but you'll get the idea. When you are given the x-intercepts of a cubic function, this is the formula you use, the one we used in the previous sum, okay? So it's x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3. Those are my x-intercepts, right? In our one that we did previously, there were two that were repeating because it was also a turning point. And that's important. When one of them repeats, in other words, it doesn't go through and then up through a different x. If it turns at the x-intercept, we get the repeat, bracket squared. Okay. So it is a x minus minus 2 is x plus 2 x minus 3, x minus 5, right? We do not multiply that out. We say, hang on, I want to find A. Do I have an x and a y? In other words, another point on the curve. I do, 4, which is 0, 4. So sub in the values. 
4 equals a, 0 plus 2, 0 minus 3, 0 minus 5. It makes it so much easier. So it's 2 minus 3 minus 5. If I multiply that, I get 30. So 30a equals 4. And then I divide by 30. So a is equal to 2 over 15. Right. And then what I do is I substitute this into there and I multiply everything out. Okay. So in other words, y equals 2 over 15. I'll keep the first bracket and let me multiply those two out first. x squared minus 3x minus 5x is minus 8x plus 15. Right. So all I've done is sub my a back in and I'm going to multiply out. Right. So it's x cubed minus 8x squared plus 15x. Oh, my squared's a bit wonky. <coughs> plus 2x squared minus 16x plus 13. <coughs> Right, there's no other x cubed, so it'll be 2 over 15 x cubed. Minus 8 x squared plus 2 x squared is minus 6 x squared times 2 over 15. So minus 6 times 2 over 15, that's over 1. 3 goes into there twice, into there 5, so minus 4 over 5. You can, of course, use a calculator for that. Then 15 minus 16 is minus x, so it's a minus 2 over 15 x. And then 2 over 15 times 30, which is 4. Okay, so in other words, A is 2 over 15. B is minus 4 over 5. C is minus 2 over 15. And D is 4. Okay, that would be a normal question that they would ask normally. They could quite easily ask you a question like this. Okay, this is a very common question. Okay, so it relies on the fact that you know this form of, the general form of a cubic, where there are x3, x intercepts, or two where one repeats. Okay. All right. How does that sound? Is that okay? Any questions? Nothing? Are you sure? Right, okay, I'm going to go back to sharing um, my other screen. I just want to check if there are any messages from you guys. No? Okay, cool. Let's just go through these. I just want to check. I found some nice ones here and everywhere. Okay. So what I'd like to do next, actually, before we do any more other questions, is the equation of a tangent. Okay? Let's just rehash that, you know, like sort out any issues around the equation of a tangent. All right? <clears throat> right. So what they could do is they could give you some kind of a cubic function. Minus x cubed minus 3x plus 5. They give you a cubic function and they say find the equation of the tangent at x equals say minus 1. Okay? When you read this question, find the equation, you need to write down some other equation, of the tangent a line. So the equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. You need to know, you must always find m and c in that formula. So if this is what you're trying to find, it's m and c you are trying to find, actually. Right? Remember, m stands for the gradient. Also, the derivative. Remember, the derivative is the gradient anywhere on the curve. So we need to go and find the derivative, the general der derivative minus 3x to the 2, I'm subtracting 1. Derivative of an x is its coefficient. 
derivative of a constant is zero. This is the gradient anywhere on this function. We need the gradient at minus one, so we need to sub in minus one. Right. So this gradient will be minus six. That is what's going to go into m's position. Minus six x plus c. I still need to find c. In an equation, if I'm trying to find an unknown, I surely must have the other unknowns. And x and y represent a point on the graph. So I need a point on the curve. But I only have the x value. I need the y value that goes with it. It's partner that then makes it a point. So what do I do? I substitute it into the original where it says y equals. I want to find y. So it will be minus, minus 1 cubed, minus 3 minus 1, plus 5. Okay. And if I work this out, minus 1 plus 3 is 2, plus 5 is 7. You can just check my algebra. That's my x and my y, and I can substitute it in. And if I solve for c, I'm going to get 1. And so I rewrite that, y equals minus 6x plus 1. And that is the equation of the tangent to the curve. Okay, the, the, the line that just touches the cubic function at x equals minus 1. Okay. I just want to mention something here. If they had said find the equation of the normal, the normal at x equals minus 1, you do it exactly the same way except you change your gradient to the opposite gradient. A normal is perpendicular to a tangent. Okay? So if you have a curve and you have a tangent at a point, that's the tangent. The normal is perpendicular at that point. So opposite gradient to that. Okay, so the gradient of the normal would be plus 1 over 6. You sub it in and carry on as usual. It is the only difference in that question. Okay, the only one. Right. Okay. Any other, any questions? Anything in particular you'd like to do? Any particular type of question you would like to do before we carry on? All right, super. What I thought I'd do is I'd do a bit of limits, okay? Um, something like the limit is x tends to 2 of um, 3x plus 5, okay, with limits. What you do is the following. You sub in. If you can. If you can't, you factorize. This is the only option you have in matric. You do limits at a very basic level, so it isn't difficult at all. Okay? And by the way, once you factorize, then you sub in again. Okay. All right. So I tried to sub in two. Three times two is six plus five is eleven. I get an answer. There we go. That is the limit. What am I actually doing when I find the limit? Okay. I'm taking the line three x plus five. And where x is 2, if I go to the, to the line and I go to the curve, I will get some or other y value that corresponds with the 2, right? In other words, 3 times 2, 6 plus 5 is 11. That is actually f of 2, when x equals 2. A limit is confusing in that you never actually get to 2. So what happens is, is you get close to 2, like maybe there. And when you get close to 2, you get close to 11, but never get to 11. All right. So the way that you say this is the following. What does y, this is y, the function, what does y approach as x approaches 2? What does y become as x becomes 2? As x becomes 2, you see if you get even closer, it will be even closer to 11. So you'll get closer to, the, to 11 the closer you get to 2. 
Okay. Algebraically, you just need to sub in, or you could get something like this. Okay, something like that. Okay, so you go, okay, let me sub in. But when you substitute in, you get one minus one, zero in the denominator. And you may not divide by zero in the real number system. So you're stuck. So that is when you factorize. You say, okay, fine, I can't take the limit yet, so let me rewrite that. But I'm going to factorize and see what happens. And lo and behold, that cancels. So in other words, I only have this left, x plus 1, right? And when I substitute in my 1, I get 2. All right. So you either sub in and get an answer and you stop, or you try to sub in, and if you're dividing by zero, you say, no, let me factorize, and that, that will cancel, and then you sub one into the, re into the rest, or whatever they said x tends to. All right. So it's a very nice, easy mark or two if you get one of those. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't in an exam. Okay. They really just touch on limits in the matric syllabus, it, it, uh, it doesn't really help you much. Limits are way more complicated and they get quite tricky um, if you're doing first year math, right? But for now, that's all you need to know. And I just want to point out as well, be careful, because they like to give you a cubic function here to factorize for some odd reason. If they give you one, they want to see if you can factorize a cubic. Okay, so the limits as x tends to minus one of um, something like that. All right, so if you try to sub in minus one at the bottom, minus one plus one is zero, you can't divide by zero. So you think, okay, let me factorize. So you still write your limit because you haven't taken it yet. And you need to factorize a cubic, which is a short bracket, long bracket. Okay? The, the, square, the cube root of x cubed is x, and the cube root of 1 is 1, and the, that sign goes there. And then you do SMS. Three terms. S squared. So to get the first term here, you square the first term there. And to get the third term, S for square the first, the, square the last term to get the last term. So plus one. If you square something, it's always plus. This will always be a plus. And then M stands for mul multiply and middle. So to get the middle term, you multiply those. X times one, X. If that is a plus, that is a minus. If that is a minus, that is a plus. Sum and difference of cubes are the same factorizing method. And then we see that that will cancel. So now we no longer have the problem of dividing by zero. Right, so all we need to do now is find the limit of x squared minus x plus 1. That. And then all you do is you sub in your minus 1. Okay. So minus 1 squared minus minus one plus one. One plus one is two plus one is three. And there we go. Right? You won't get a harder one than that for sure. Not in matric anyway. Okay. Right. Any questions? Guys are very quiet now. Hi. Nothing. Right. I think I just probably need to recap um, in the last few minutes because it's going to kick us out in four minutes. Okay. All right. So limits need to sub in. But when you sub into the denominator, you are dividing by zero. Minus one plus one is zero. So you go rethink. I need to factorize factorize a cubic function, sorry, a sum of cubes. It is always the cube root and the cube root 
with that sign, whatever it is, plus, plus, or minus, minus. Then this term, you get everything here from the first terms in the first bracket. Square the first, square the last, multiply with the opposite sign. Okay. And then those two brackets fall away. That's what you want. You want that to happen. So the ones that they give you at school, that will always happen. That denominator will cancel. And then you substitute your minus in. Okay, your minus one in. All right. Okay, again here, factorizing, but this was an easy one. It was difference of squares. So you see that your denominator will always cancel. They designed that way that they will. Because you wouldn't be able to do it if it didn't cancel. Okay? You do not do any other limits that cater for cases like that. So it will always fall away if you factorize. Okay? And please remember, you do not need to factorize every time. If, if, you, can, if you can substitute in one and you're not dividing by zero then you sub it in okay you don't look at this and go oh i must factorize you do step number one first okay step number one sub in if you can't you factorize and then you sub in okay all right super hope that helped um and then i'll see you on wednesday same time um and we're using a, 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 Zoom, um, an, an, a Zoom account that only lasts for 40 minutes. Okay, so unfortunately, it's not 45 minutes, it's 40 minutes. And um, it will be exactly the same every Monday and Wednesday. All right. So, all right, cool. I hope you guys have a nice little break tomorrow on your public holiday. Um, I don't have a public holiday here in Vietnam as such but seeing as all my work is online and um and a lot of it is south african based i also have a little bit of a break tomorrow but i look forward to seeing you guys on wednesday and um, i will deviate back to what we were doing previously okay so i won't do calculus again i also promised somebody that i would do some analytical geometry at some point so i'd like to start that soon as well okay it's a nice section easy marks